The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and today we're on board the CV340Z, a Florida-built center console powered by triple 300 horsepower Evernor DTEC G2 outboards. We're going to do a full features inspection and also put it through a sea trial to see how this engine and hull package match up to deliver features and performance. Let's start with the engines that power this vessel, the E-Tech G2300s. Because the steering assembly is integral to the midsection, there are no outside steering rams and hydraulic tubes to get in the way. This innovation allows the engines to tilt fully out of the water at an 82 degree angle. The E-Tech G2 upboards are direct injection two-stroke engines, which provide much more torque in the low and mid RPM ranges than do four-stroke outboards because every cylinder has a power stroke on every turn of the crankshaft. It's the only outboard on the market that has direct in-cylinder fuel injection under 350 horsepower. Direct injection puts the right amount of fuel in the cylinder at the right time for efficient operation. The fuel is injected when the piston is closed off the exhaust port, eliminating the release of unburned fuel in the exhaust, which makes the E-Tech G2 the cleanest outboard engine on the market. Because the E-Tech G2 has an EMM or engine management module with a computer monitoring the conditions and throttle input, Evnerd says it measures out just the right amount of fuel and times it to optimize combustion. The cylinder actually has what amounts to two combustion chambers, an alcove where the injector and spark plug are housed, and the main chamber below. The design allows for what is called stratified combustion, and it allows the injector to add less fuel when running at low RPM, optimizing fuel efficiency. Evnerd says when the throttles are opened wide, the engine automatically switches to homogenized combustion, hitting the optimal 14 to 1 air to fuel ratio in the combustion chamber that delivers peak power. So now, let's see how these engines did in our test. The CV340Z has a length overall of 34 feet 9 inches and a beam of 10 feet. With an empty weight of 7,950 pounds, 50% fuel and 4 people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 11,811 pounds. With the triple 300 horsepower Evernur DTEC G2 outboards powering our test boat, we reached the top speed of 57.9 miles per hour at 5,800 RPM. Best economic cruise came in at 4,000 RPM and 35.8 miles per hour. It was at that speed that the 31 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 1.2 miles per gallon in a range of 379 statute miles. From a standing start, the CV340Z got onto plane in 4.8 seconds and accelerated to 20 miles per hour in 5.9 seconds. But a trolling speed fuel economy is one of the most outstanding features of the G2300. Here we see the boat's performance at idle, 1,000 and 1,500 RPM. The key numbers are under miles per gallon in green. At a typical trolling speed of 6.2 miles per hour, we got 2.9 nautical miles per gallon, which is 72% or more than all the other triple engine four-stroke engines we checked in class. Since fishermen spend 40% of their time at trolling speeds or idle, the savings in fuel and the extra range provided by the Evernur G2 engines is remarkable. This boat is built to get anglers to the fishing grounds in a wide range of conditions. She was a stable boat with a strong feel, and while we didn't have notable sea conditions to really put her through her paces, crossing waves showed a solid transition with minimal spray maintaining a dry ride. She was responsive to the helm and turn tests showed no hint of chine walk or falling off the turn. This boat is rigged to fish and carry all the critical gear fishermen need for a successful day out on the water, so let's give her an in-depth inspection starting at the bow. The forward sections of the hull have a sharp forefoot that expands to a subtle flare on the top sides, helping to keep spray out. The hull has two steps which help the boat get on plane quicker, go faster and use less fuel. The bow layout is wide open with plenty of fishing room. Covering boards forward are 30 inches high and 19 inches wide and all around bolsters are 8 inches deep. A hatch covers a locker with an anchor hanger and an additional locker forward. A door below grants excellent access to the road locker. The foredeck area has lots of storage including these undergunnel bins with raised edges. The optional coffin box is 3 feet 9 inches long and has a gasketed lid held open by a single gas assist strut. The foredeck is covered in sea deck matting and has storage under the hatch lids including a pair of 45 gallon fish boxes to either side. A 53 gallon centerline locker that can be rigged to be a fish box or a live well and a 180 gallon forward fish box with a two piece hatch lid. CV has a custom electric ram system to open the forward fish box, even with the coffin box in place. The center box on this boat is rigged with an additional battery bank to power some additional systems that we'll check out in a moment. This upholstered seat built into the front of the console has details like diamond pattern quilting and custom stitching, and it slides the port to reveal a compartment. There's a fold out lash to hold it open per NNMA certification to ABYC standards. 
The overhead inside is 5 feet in the aft area and I didn't hit my head getting in or out. There's a sink, room for a porta potty and an electrical breaker panel, as well as a locker for additional storage and access to the back side of the helm control panel. Walkways to either side of the console have 8 vertical rod holders per side and bring us past the T-top frames which are mounted to the console sides to save deck space and give the boat a premium look. Built-in ladders to either side have steps 10 inches apart, again in compliance with ABYC standards for NMMA certification, as are grab handles of a smaller diameter than the main support pipes. The helm console has an isinglass windshield protecting it from the front and sides right up to the fiberglass hardtop with LEDs built in, including one that can switch to red preserving night vision. There's a compass on top set among the sea deck foam that's designed to have recessed trays to hold odds and ends. The compass lines up with the wheel on its fixed base. The main helm panel consists of two 16-inch Simrad multifunction displays behind a protective latching acrylic panel that holds itself up on gas assist struts. To starboard of the wheel is the Evinrude Icon 2 EST control binnacle, trim tab controls, the ignition key, Simrad autopilot control, and engine trim control. Above are the JL audio control and the engine start-stop switches. On the port side of the dash is the Evinrude Icon touch engine control and monitoring system with 7-inch color screen. Rocker switches for various electrical systems are along the lower edge under an acrylic cover, but I kept bumping my knees into them when using the angled footrest. There's a welcome toe kick beneath the footrest. The leaning post has a 45-inch wide seat upholstered with diamond pattern quilting and the CV logo. The forward edge is an angled leaning bolster and there's a stainless steel flip down footrest. There's a rail all around, good for passengers who are standing around the helm for the run to the fishing grounds, as well as beverage holders alternating with rod holders. There's also a fold out shelf for bait prep and below that, a pair of lockers with gasketed doors side by side keeping tackle trays organized. In the bottom of this custom leaning post is the Seakeeper 3 gyro stabilizer in a striking installation behind a window. There's an upper helm station on top of the hardtop that's accessed by the side ladders. The upper helm has a centerline wheel and a fixed base, a Simrad multifunction display, an Everdude Icon touch display, and trip tab and engine controls, as well as start stops and the Icon 2 premium shift and throttle binnacle. There's a glove box to stow odds and ends and access rigging. We'd like to see a footrest up here. A double helm seat has wraparound armrest providing security. Back down below, the cockpit sole is finished with the same sea deck except on a lid of the 60 gallon in deck live well, where a 1 inch thick see through acrylic hatch allows bait checks. A pair of fish boxes to either side hold 40 gallons each. There's a center line mechanical space that contains a sea chest with an acrylic top permitting inspection. Inside are four submersible pumps with two dedicated to each live well for redundancy. Note the heavy duty seacock aft with ball valve as well as the four ball valve shutoffs coming out of the sea chest. All hoses are double clamped. The transom features the other live well with an aquarium window to simplify bay checks. The lid is gasketed and has a latch so it can be pressurized. There's a sink to starboard under a lid. Beneath that is a door to a locker where the trim tab pumps are accessible. On the port end of the transom is a door to the swim platform. It has a flip over top section hinged on its inboard side and held in place with a bungee latch. It measures 19 inches wide and is a 9 inch step up from the cockpit and a 2 inch step down to the swim platform. The platform on the CV340Z is finished in sea deck and extends 29 inches from the transom. There's a walkway along its forward edge for the full width allowing the crew to get around without putting a foot in the well where the outboards mount. We would like to see a grab rail on the transom somewhere to allow crew to work here more safely. A pair of 0 degree rod holders are mounted to the transom. Because the Evinrude Etec G2 outboards use single tube rigging, thanks to their internal steering system, the swim platform is much less cluttered. Overall, the triple outboards combined with a two-step hull give the 340Z the performance to target blue water game fish. She's complete with many amenities that make a day in the water more comfortable and functional, including the optional sea keeper. And powering her with triple Evinrude Etec G2 300s make this offshore fishing machine even more competitive because of its fuel efficiency and extended range. And that's my full inspection and performance evaluation of the CV340Z. For Boatest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.